In a past live stream, I painted a character of mine in Medibank Paint Pro, a free program to see how it held up against Clip Studio Paint, a paid titan of a program. In this video, I'll be going over the main pros and cons of each program while a speed paint of the live stream goes on in the background. So first we'll be going over the pros of Medibank Paint Pro. Medibank is a free program that handles very similarly to bigger programs, so it has a lot of similar shortcuts and a lot of similar tool names. This is a pro because if you were to ever switch to a paid program in the future, or if you wanted to use something a little bit more advanced, then you could very easily do so because it has a lot of similar functions. So it, it's a very easy to transition program. This program is also very accessible for beginners. So it's really easy to read and it's really easy to get used to. All the stuff is right in your face. It's really easy to see all of the shortcuts right there, all the names of all the functions that are happening. It's really easy to get used to and it's really easy to read. Medibang also has a lot of the tools that bigger programs have like layer types and brush settings etc. So Medibang, while it is, you know, a free program and it's a little bit more simple, it still has a lot of those more intense tools that bigger programs will have, which is really nice for a free program because, you know, you're getting that bang for your buck and that buck is zero. <laughs> Medibang also includes some of the lesser known functions directly on the toolbar. So it's right in your face. A lot of bigger programs require you to look through the program to find these certain tools. So say if you were going into your selection tools and auto automatically has your expansion, like your pixel expansion right there. It automatically includes like your color fill, that sort of thing, or like how much your color should expand when using your paint bucket. That isn't always directly in your face when it comes to programs. Sometimes that's like hidden within the UI. So it's kind of tough to see. So it's really nice that they kind of just put it directly on the upper toolbar. You don't have to scroll. You don't have to look through all these little windows to look for all of these functions, which is pretty nice. And there's also a mobile version of Medibang that is completely free. So there is a version of Medibang Paint Pro that is available to download on both your phone and your tablets. That's also completely free. So if you ever wanted to do art on the go, Medibang, you know, has options for you. Some cons of Medibang though, is that there are no external brushes that you can download. All of them are proprietary and stuck within Medibang. The issue with that as well is that the extended brush library isn't great. A lot of them are just effects brushes and even so, the effects aren't that amazing looking. They're pretty clunky. And making your own brushes is very unintuitive. So if you didn't really like how any of the default brushes on Medibang worked, making your own brush is pretty complicated. Well, not necessarily complicated. It's that it's not, not complicated enough. There isn't really a lot of settings you can change. There really isn't much many options there for you. So making your brushes can be a bit finicky. There are a lot of smaller things that are also missing from functions that make the program frustrating for a seasoned illustrator. So there are a lot of things, even though it has a lot of similar things to bigger programs, there's a lot of very small things that are missing, a lot of quality of life stuff uh, that is not included in Medibang that is in bigger programs. Like there is no nudging with arrow keys. If you don't know what nudging is, when you select an object, you can use your arrow keys to move it over a pixel at a time. So there's no nudging with your arrow keys on Medibang. Your arrow keys are your rotate. Backspace also doesn't double as delete. Like, so if you ever wanted to, you know, get rid of something, like if you selected something with your lasso, you would have to hit the delete button. You wouldn't have, like backspace isn't an option. You also can't merge more than two layers at a time unless you put them in a folder. So you do have to put all of your layers within a folder if you wanted to merge them into one thing, which can get complicated, especially if you have like clipped layers. Um, and if you wanted to merge all of those together, you couldn't do that unless if you unclipped them, put them in a folder and then clipped them again. You also cannot clip layers to a folder. That's not a thing you can do in Medibang, but Medibang is not great with the smaller things. Uh, so if you're a bit more seasoned, it might get a little bit frustrating for you. And I did say that there was a mobile version, but while there is a mobile app, it doesn't actually perform that well. So if you were to use it on your phone, the UI gets pretty squished. Like it's pretty simple on desktop, but if you were to take it to something like a phone or maybe even an iPad, it can get a little bit small and clunky. 
Now let's move on to Clip Studio Paint. So the pros of Clip Studio Paint is that it's a very, very intuitive program. It's considered industry standard within many modern digital art settings. So it is a very, very strong, very hefty program. It's got a lot of functions that are available. And it also includes a lot of functions that a lot of other programs don't have. Some of those include the perspective rulers. So what you can do is you can place down your own perspective and it snaps your brushes to a perspective that you could set, right? So let's say that I wanted a two point perspective. I can put down uh, two points with the tool and whichever direction that I draw in, it will snap to that perspective ruler. It also has a comic and manga page creator and it has layout tools. So a couple of programs have this, but this one includes building your own boxes and speech bubbles in a very, very advanced way. You can change the spacing between each box. You can change the types of bubbles. You can change the line width, that sort of thing. It's really nice and really, really smooth. They also have auto coloring. Uh, I don't use this ever. <laughs> it's pretty Pretty finicky but it is available for you they also have vectorized layers which is really nice it makes drawn things on the layers unaffected by making them smaller or larger with the transform tool so that's pretty awesome if you've ever been on a program and you want to make something like way way bigger but then it like messes up your line quality the vectorized layer makes sure it doesn't do that and etc etc because there's so many things to name. The brushes also handle very beautifully on Clip. Clip also comes with a lot of very lifelike default brushes and many of advanced effects brushes. So they come with a lot of buildings, a lot of lights, foliage, etc. And they make these effects look drawn. They're really, really nice, really intuitive. And when I say lifelike default brushes, they come with like watercolor brushes, ink brushes, pencil brushes, that sort of thing. And they all handle and look very much like the real thing. Um, and if you were not too happy with whatever the defaults were, there is a huge library of brushes made by the community that you can download from the library, or you can like just download them from online. Clip Studio also allows you to download Photoshop brushes. So if you ever wanted those, that's available. Making your own brushes is very advanced and very intuitive. There's lots of options. You can make your brushes as crazy as you want. So there's a lot to go through. If you'd like to support the channel in the creation of free arts education, become a member on Patreon for working files, behind the scenes posts, and discounts on our class offerings. Some cons of Clip Studio Paint though is that it's very non-beginner friendly. Clip Studio is a very, very hefty, very clunky program. It is an intense and busy UI. There are many functions that are hidden behind windows and hidden behind scrollers and you wouldn't know about them unless you're pretty seasoned. If you weren't looking for them, you wouldn't know and you would just think that it was missing. The more advanced functions require you as an artist to be more advanced as well. So like I mentioned the perspective ruler, but if you don't really know how perspective works, it's not like it's an, oh, I'm doing the perspective for you it's more oh you need to know how this works so that you can place it down and make it easier for yourself so clip studio does cost money though it does go on sale very frequently and it's a one-time payment there are two different versions of clip studio there's clip studio paint pro and clip studio paint ex ex is the more advanced version clip studio pro is the cheaper version i have pro it works perfectly fine if you're an illustrator ex just kind of gives you more animation capabilities but either or it's totally fine. However, they are moving to a subscription model for any 2.0 updates. So you can read more details about that on their site. So you have to pay for updates, not necessarily the base program, but if you wanted updates further from that, you would have to pay for the subscription model. And there is a mobile version of Clip Studio, but it was already a subscription model of $6 per month. And it also doesn't perform very well on mobile unless you're on an iPad. And even then it's a little bit finicky. So really both of these programs should be used on desktop if you have that option because there are mobile versions, but really with most programs, unless it was built for mobile, it's not gonna be very mobile friendly. Overall, the program that you choose doesn't really matter. It's whatever the artist prefers. If you wanted my opinion, I do prefer Clip Studio as a seasoned artist. I would much rather pay a little bit for a far more powerful program than settle for something for free. However, if you're a beginner artist looking for something to try, I'd recommend starting with a free program like Medibank. If you find that you really like digital art or want something a little more complex, you can give yourself an upgrade down the line. If you'd like to see more videos on these programs, we have tutorials for both Medibank and Clip Studio Paint available on our channel. If you'd like to see this video in real time with my live comments, there will be a link to the original live stream in the description below. Join a virtual class to learn live from our professional artists. Get creative assignments, individual guidance, and real-time feedback on your artwork. Start today and level up your practice. If you learn something new, like and share this with a fellow art nerd. If you love receiving quality and free arts education, subscribe. Here's a couple other videos you can check out next.